Hi guys, happy Thursday. Um, as usual, we'll just kind of give people a few minutes to come in and join us for this Sourdough Mamas Live. Um, welcome to all of you guys who are here already. Um, we're gonna be talking about inclusions. But like I said, we'll just give people about 30, 45 seconds to kind of really jump in since it is just for 401, um, at least my time in uh, Colorado. Let me know where you're watching from um, and what time it is there. We um, have a massive, massive, massive snowstorm coming um, in over the weekend. We here, I'm in Golden, just outside of Denver, and we're expecting two to three feet of snow over two days. Um, up in the mountains, it's going to be a lot more. Uh, California, the mountains in California and Lake Tahoe, Mount Shasta, they're all getting tons of snow too. So in Utah, so um, send me a message if you guys are going to be snowed in this weekend, just like us, because uh, yeah, we need some solidarity there. <laughs> we got lots of food here though. I've been baking up a storm so we could survive on bread if we need to. Um, hi Lisa, Nova Scotia, seven o'clock there. Yep. Three hours ahead. Yeah, Dan is just in the next town over um, in here in Colorado, so he knows he knows what's coming. And Margie says hi from Kentucky. We had 12 inches a few weeks ago. Wow. Yeah, that's a big snowfall. It's uh, we've lived here almost four years now, and we've never had a snowfall that's going to be this big. But we'll see. And I think a change in Colorado, and we might get like a dusting. So it's hard to say. So officially, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Sourdough Mamas Live number six. This is all about sourdough inclusions. And this episode of Sourdough Mamas Live is sponsored by the Sourdough for Busy Moms course um, by Levenly, where not only do we discuss inclusions, but also a ton of other stuff from um, beginning uh, beginner's uh, guide to sourdough, like start to finish. I guide you through uh, with a video course of how to mix, how to add the salt, how to, how to fold, how to shape, how to bake. Um, from start to finish. We also cover things like time management and scheduling. So it's really, really helpful and great. So uh, head on over to courses.levenly.com. I will have a link in the description below once this video is done on the live stream. And uh, you guys can check that out. So um, a little bit about me, in case you don't know me. My name is Heather. I am the founder of levenly.com and the Sourdough Mamas community. And um, I am here doing Sourdough Mamas with you. This is all about you guys getting your questions answered and about topics that are important to you. So you guys send over your questions definitely as we go. Um, I'll read through a couple times to try to answer some questions. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys walk away from this with a deeper understanding of what it means to add inclusions to sourdough and also that you don't need a recipe to do so. So I know a lot of people are a little bit nervous when playing with their bread, but I want you to come away with, from, uh, with this from this video feeling more confident in adding inclusions. So here's kind of what we're gonna do. Um, I have my bread sitting out in front of me, you can't see it yet, but I have my dough already cut into three pieces. Um, I'm going to add my inclusions now. I'm adding it during the pre-shape phase. And then that way when I'm done, um, it'll have you know 20, 30 minutes to rest like it should as per my recipe, my simple sourdough recipe. The link to that will be in the description below as well. Um, so it can rest and then during its resting time, then we'll have a chat. We'll have a deep discussion about the details of inclusions and all that stuff. Definitely um, if you have questions as you're watching me um, add the inclusions and do the pre-shape, send them over. But just know that I might cover them uh, coming up uh, when we actually have the discussion. Then after we have the chat, once we get questions answered, then I'll show you guys how I actually shape my loaves because it, it, it requires a bit of a delicate hand. You don't need that really tight surface tension um, like you do with just a plain loaf. Um, just You just need to be a little more gentle because those inclusions can pierce through. And uh, I'll show you all that. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi from the UK, hi from Winnipeg, hi from Utah, expecting snow tonight. Yeah, you guys are probably getting your snow already. Um, luckily ours won't start till Friday night. So um, I'm gonna tip the screen down and I'm gonna show you what I'm working with here. So, so this is my countertop and my three uh, sections of dough. Like I said, this is a simple sourdough recipe, so it makes three loaves. I've already cut it out, but besides that, I haven't done a thing. So I just did that literally one minute before I uh, came live with you guys. 
So I sprayed my countertop with water. You'll probably notice that there's no um, flour on my countertop. And that's only because I prefer to use water when doing inclusions because it just helps everything kind of stick together better when you're folding um, your edges. And it, the, the uh, less amount of flour we can actually incorporate into our dough, the better. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this one. So the three inclusions we're doing today are the uh, cheddar bacon jalapeno, and we're gonna do a really groovy strawberry swirl, and also a cinnamon raisin. So I'm gonna show you guys that now. So with this one, I'll do the cheddar bacon jalapeno to get us started. So I'm gonna try to slide my screen forward a little bit to kind of get a little closer for you. See if I can do that without completely disrupting my dough. Sorry, I got dough all over my little agenda that I have taped to the computer. <laughs> the hazards of working with sourdough. All right, so I'm gonna get my sprayer. I just use an ordinary garden sprayer um, from literally the garden store. You can get much fancier ones, but this is just what I have, so it works. I'm gonna spray my hands, and then I'm gonna grab my inclusions. I'm gonna show you guys. So I have here, um, about 45 grams of just chopped up uh, cheddar cheese in small little cubes. I like cubes. Um, you can use shredded if you like, but I like that big bite of cheddar cheese um, in my bread. So that's the cheese we're using, um, 45 grams of that. Then we have 30 grams of fresh jalapeno. Um, you can also use pickled jalapenos. I've heard those are really good too, but I just always use fresh and my husband loves it. So that's what I just use for him and then we do about 25 grams of bacon. Um, this is actually turkey bacon because I ran out of regular bacon and I forgot to get more for this <laughs> episode. So I had turkey bacon, which is totally fine. You guys can make substitutions kind of as you see it, use what you have in your kitchen, um, you know, be creative. So we're going to do it with this um, dough right here. So again, I'm gonna spritz my hands with water and I'm gonna kind of very gently spread this out kind of more or less into a square rectangle shape. Um, being very careful not to degas the dough too, too much, but we also want it spread so that we can put our inclusions on. So just like that, maybe a little bit taller. Perfect. And um, I will talk about when to add inclusions, like doing it in the pre-shape phase versus um, in the folds. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But just for right now, we will get started. So I'm going to just sprinkle on my bacon. And I save a, roughly like a quarter of it. Um, I put three quarters of it on um, two thirds of the dough. See, that's like, if you imagine this in thirds, like one, two, three, I put it on two thirds. And um, you'll see why in a second. And try to get it right to the edges if you can. Um, I can be just a little bit picky, but I'm gonna try to not be like that right now. <laughs> and then putting on the cheddar, save about a quarter of that as well in the bowl. And then you guys might hear my oven in the background. I just made a loaf of sourdough bread and um, it's a 15 year old oven. So it is still venting the heat out and it does so for about an hour or so after I bake. So if you can hear that, I apologize. And here's our jalapeno, I'm gonna sprinkle that over too. And just like that, so that looks actually perfect. Get those seeds in there. Now, as you can imagine, our first fold is gonna be this, this one over. So I'm just first gonna make sure that I can lift up with no sticking and I can. So I'm gonna give this a gentle, gentle tug and fold it over a third like that. And then when you fold this guy over, he's going to bring his inclusions with him and put it on the top of the loaf, just like that. And see, if you have flour all over the place, this might not stick as well. Um, so that's why I like to use the water instead. And now we're going to do the same thing on here, but just on two thirds of it. So I typically do um, the bottom two thirds just because that's what I've always done, you know, creatures of habit. So I'm gonna put the rest of our ingredients on the top and try to keep it kind of toward the inside, but you can absolutely come all the way to the bottom like down here. I know you can't really see that great, but um, I have bacon bit pieces stuck to the very end. I'm gonna stick some cheddar in there too. 
and spread the rest out on that lower two thirds. And then our jalapeno. And if anything falls off, just stick it back on. There we go. All right. So the bottom two thirds are absolutely covered in our inclusions. And now what I'm going to do, just like before, I'm going to first grab, first I'm going to make sure I can lift with no pulling and I can. I'm going to grab this end because it doesn't have any inclusions on it and fold it over onto my inclusions. So I'm going to give it kind of like a little stretch and then fold. And I'm trying to make sure that all of my inclusions stay on the inside. Not a big deal if they come out, but that's just what I like to do to prevent things from scorching. And then what I'm going to do, spritz my hands again because they're getting dry. I'm actually going to move this guy up a little bit like this because I need a little more space. I'm going to just roll this kind of like a jelly roll here. Let me clear some space. Sorry. All right, I'm going to roll him down, put my thumbs under and roll over my thumbs just like this. Tuck in that cheese and roll again and roll again. And I can feel that this dough is absolutely exploding with its inclusions right now. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm pinching the ends too to seal in that stuff so it all stays in there and then I will just give my countertop a spritz with my water and he gets moved up here and he's going to rest and now I'm going to re-spritz this part of my counter and I'm going to bring this guy down and let's do the cinnamon raisin with this one I'm going to save the wacky one for last um, I did a strawberry swirl as kind of an experimental loaf. And I have these three loaves baked, by the way, guys. I'm going to show you the final bakes um, as soon as we get the inclusions in. And I had this kind of inspiration from the Sourdough Mamas group on Facebook that somebody mentioned using dried, freeze-dried strawberries, um, but crushed. And I was like, hey, that could be fun. So I crushed some up, and I swirled it into my loaf, and it looked really cool. Um, my daughter loved it. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that one as well, just for something completely out of the box. So again, I just spread that out just like before. I'm gonna grab my raisins. And these raisins, let me see. I did 75 grams of raisins, um, and these are pre-soaked. So I had these soaking already for a few hours in hot water, and then I just drained the water off. So these are no longer dry, they're very plump. Um, and But I dried the surface off. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. Um, we're going to do just two thirds of the dough. And sometimes when I um, weigh out my inclusions, like I said earlier, that you don't have to follow a recipe, you just kind of follow the guidelines that I'll discuss. And I'll weigh out some inclusions and then sometimes it just feels like way too much or it feels like not enough. So then I just won't add them all or I'll add um, a little bit more kind of as I'm going. So you can absolutely be flexible. There's a little stem in that reason. You can absolutely be flexible um, and just kind of go with the flow and, you know, make adjustments as you see fit. Okay, I'm going to pull up. Oh, I forgot my cinnamon. Oh, that's the most important part. The cinnamon I don't weigh. And maybe you should. I think some people do. I don't. I just give it a really generous, generous, generous sprinkle. Because what I learned is uh, more cinnamon is better. <laughs> I did a really light sprinkle like I would have done on toast uh, my first time around. And you could hardly even taste the cinnamon. So... Good solid sprinkle like that. Then we're gonna give this, make sure it's not stuck. Give this a tug out and fold it over the half of the middle. And then same thing over here, make sure he's not stuck. You have to use swift hands here, up and over. Perfect. And it all stays inside, theoretically. <laughs> not always, but theoretically. And then we're gonna do the same thing. I might not actually end up using all these raisins, so I'll show you that in just a second. Um, I'm trying to remember if I did the top or bottom on the last one, but I'll just do the bottom two thirds this time. I think that's what I did the last time. I kind of switch it up each time. I have no rhyme or reason, but I like to be consistent when I'm teaching. Um, so that's kind of where my head is at. And I see Debbie in Santa Cruz um, has a dusting of snow on the mountains there already. 
So yeah, this is a massive, massive storm that's affecting a huge, a huge part of the U.S. And I think um, even Western Canada, I think Vancouver is getting a ton of rain from it as well. I'm total weather geek, can you tell? <laughs> Should have gone into meteorology. All right, so there's my raisins on the bottom two thirds, just like in the first one. Put that guy there. And again, a really generous sprinkle of cinnamon. Then we're going to move my raisin. Make sure he's not stuck and he kind of is, no, he's actually okay. So I'm gonna give him a gentle tug and fold over. And then pick up any raisins that happen to fall out. I'm gonna spritz my hands one more time because they're getting a little sticky. Then we're gonna do the same thing. Thumbs under, pick up the whole um, section on the top and you're gonna roll it over itself. I just lost some raisins, but that's okay. And keep rolling, tug it back and roll right till it rests on its seam. That's what you want. You want it to sit on its seam so it seals itself. So this guy, let's see, I'm gonna make some space for him up there. My dough is all, always boy, so I'm not sure why that is. <laughs> Don't ask me, my starter's a girl. All right, and I'm gonna just pinch the ends there like I did on the first one. And he's gonna rest. And I'm gonna just sweep off my excess raisins and some of the cinnamon. Clean up my workspace a little bit. And then we're gonna do that wacky strawberry swirl uh, loaf. So this one's kind of fun. So what I did was I took um, freeze dried strawberries just from Target. Uh, I think they're actually right here. Yeah, I used these ones. Um, it's a giant bag because my kids love to eat these as treats on their cereal. They'll eat like a thousand of these. Um, and I took those, I put them in my mortar and pestle. I weighed out um, 20 grams. And then I have like a fine kind of strawberry powder, um, if you can see that. So here's what we're going to do with this one. I'm going to spritz my work surface so everything is nice and moist. I'm going to actually cut this guy in half. And we're gonna do two, and I'll show you why in a second. Bring that guy over there. All right, so I'm going to do the exact same thing as with the others, kind of spread it out as much as I can without degassing. So since they're smaller, of course, the rectangles are gonna be a little bit smaller. You need to pick it up, use gravity to your advantage. You can do that. So just a little guy like that, same over here. Kind of stretch it out like pizza dough, very, very gently. All right, I have some cinnamon on there, but that's okay. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna basically cover this guy with my strawberry powder. Um, not at all like I did with these guys, and I'll show you why. So I'm gonna just sprinkle this on, and not super, super heavy. Um, you don't want anything any kind of like heaps or piles of the strawberry powder. But you want it spread out evenly and so that there's a little bit excess on there, but not like a big, you know, heap of it, like I said. So if you need to, you can use your fingers, spread it out. And then basically you're just gonna kind of roll this up, fold it over just like you did before. Um, it's just the whole thing is covered. And then we're going to do the same thing here. And kind of spread that out each way. Have it really stick well. You know what would also work, it just occurred to me, is actually putting this on a plate and kind of rolling the dough around in it would also work. Um, would be a lot less messy, first of all, and um, it would really stick well. I'm gonna kind of pick this up and do this and pick up all this excess powder. Then I'm gonna twist this up, kind of like I did before. Twirl, 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 just like that. And then I'm actually going to put him right in the middle of this guy. Don't even ask me where I came up with this idea. I just kind of did it one day and it worked really well. <laughs> so 
Um, and then I'm just going to kind of wipe my hands off with this wet towel. At this point, I would wash my hands. Um, as you can see, I have dried strawberry gunk all over my fingers. I'm going to try to wipe all that off so that the outside of my dough stays relatively not pink. But, you know, we're not after perfection. So that's the best I can do. I'm going to spritz one more time. Then I'm going to just pull from the sides to make sure that I have enough wiggle room here. Spread them out a little bit. Then I'm going to go like this. Pull down and up. Up and down. And then fold this guy up and over. And this guy up and over. And then we're just going to flip. And I'm going to just hold him for a second so I can spray the counter before I set him down. And there you go. I'm just going to quickly clean up my surface here just so we don't have any uh, errant strawberry powder getting on everything. And then, just like you would after your pre-shaping, you're going to lightly dust your um, dough with your flour. This is just all-purpose flour. I just do a light coating so that my towel doesn't stick to it. Just like that. And that's the first time you'll see me use flour. And then it's just gonna be covered for um, ideally 30 minutes, um, but we'll just see how long our chat goes and how long we end up talking for. So that is my process for doing my inclusions. Um, I'm going to show you the loaves now that I've already baked. So what order do we go in? So here's the cheddar jalapeno bacon. I cut a slice of this guy for you. But this is what it looks like on the inside. You can see the jalapeno, the cheddar, big chunks of cheddar, which I love. The bacon is dispersed throughout um, and it's absolutely delicious. I'm the biggest baby with spicy food, I'm not even gonna lie. Like I don't even put pepper on my eggs um, and I can eat this. I can't eat like a ton of it, but I could have a piece of it and the flavor is just absolutely out of this world. Um, but my husband devours it and that'll be gone, you know, in a day and a half at the most, completely gone. Here is the cinnamon raisin. So you can see with him, the raisins kind of came out a little bit where I scored, but that's okay. We're going to try to keep them inside and we'll talk about that. But when you score, there's not much you can do, you know, some raisins are going to come out, but you can see that there's no raisins on the outside of the loaf otherwise. And here's what we look like inside cinnamon raisin swirled so smells amazing my house smelled like a bakery when i had that in the oven i went out took the baby for a walk and came home after i had baked and it smelled so good in here and then this is the wacky strawberry swirl and coincidentally i also got a really wacky ear on this one too i tried to do a square score and it just had other ideas so <laughs> so this is what the strawberry swirl looks like on the inside see how it's red um, you can see the swirly pattern, and you definitely get that flavor of strawberry as you eat it. It's so, so yummy. And it's like so weird and unexpected, which is why I love it. Um, if you guys have any like totally wacky uh, inclusions that you want to send over um, in the chat, let me know what you've done. One of the recommendations I got was to add uh, hot Cheetos and Takis to the sourdough, which I promptly went out and bought from like a gas station corner store, but they're still in my pantry. I haven't made it yet. Um, I actually wouldn't eat them again. I'm a big wuss, but I would make it for my husband. I just like to see like what happens, you know, what's like, what's going to happen when we add these inclusions. I'm going to tip you down a little bit. All right. So now that I've talked your ears off, I'm going to take a look and see what questions you guys have for me. Let's see. Um, Karen said, can I ask if you already pre-cooked the bacon? Yes. I absolutely did. Um, the bacon was pre-cooked and the raisins were soaked. Um, and I think that's all the prep I did um, besides chopping up and crushing the strawberries. So yeah, you'd absolutely have to bake, uh, cook the bacon first and make sure it's cooled. We're going to talk about that in a second too. Good question. Um, and let me see if I missed any. Um, Dan said, I'm using a chili powder called Chihuahua Amarillo, about one tablespoon. I believe it's better to add with the flour rather than in the fold. 
seems to me it would be any evenly distributed. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we're going to touch on that um, here in a minute about when to add which inclusions. Um, and also, I'm going to just remind you that the power is completely in your hands. So um, if you want to play with adding it with the flower, absolutely. Uh, if you want to play with adding it with one of the folds, I encourage that. Just basically kind of just go for it um, and get your hands dirty and see what happens and take notes always throughout the process. Um, I will link to my sourdough notes page down in the description below um, so that you guys can print that out and keep really good notes with your bakes because that's how we improve is going by what we already know and what worked for us before. So great questions, guys. Um, Let's see. Oh, Darcy says it's sunny in Seattle. <laughs> that's wonderful. That's very rare, isn't it? I think that's pretty rare for you guys. Um, Susie said, is that regular cinnamon or cinnamon sugar? I just do cinnamon. If you want to do cinnamon sugar, 100% go for it. Um, you can. That's the beautiful thing about inclusions. Like I like to do the cinnamon raisin. You can do cinnamon sugar raisin. You could just do cinnamon sugar. You could just do raisin. You could do cinnamon raisin apple you could cut up some apples like any kind of flavor combination it's completely up to you guys um but personally i just use plain old cinnamon so that's a really good question um rose said do you do a final shape after you pre-shape yes so i'm going to show you guys that that's why i kind of started out like right in with my hands on the dough so that my dough can rest and i'll show you that gentle shaping um afterwards and how i put them in the banatins and everything so yeah we absolutely will do that um, Helene said, could you do it with fresh strawberries? You could. The, the issue you might run into is with fresh fruits in general is that they're very, very wet. Um, they're moist. They hold a lot of water. And so using the dried strawberries, it's, it, you know, you have someone else removing all that moisture for you. And so you could, you could try it. It just might add more hydration to your dough. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes, but you're going to need to be, um, adjusting your hydration by like two to five percent um, if you use wet ingredients if you use fresh fruit so again we'll touch on that but that's a really great question all right so keep sending me questions I keep stepping on jalapenos that I dropped on my kitchen floor <laughs> I'm wondering what I'm standing on um, so let's first discuss how to add inclusions so my recipe my simple sourdough recipe uses a thousand grams of flour and so you roughly, if you're, like I said, you don't need to follow a recipe. So roughly, if you're adding inclusions, you're going to want to add 20% um, of the flour weight would be inclusions. So if 20% of 1,000 is 200, then you would add 200 grams of inclusions. And that's in the entire um, dough, like the big bowl before you divide it into thirds. So I divided mine into thirds. So when you're making three different loaves, you're going to aim for somewhere like 65, 75 grams of inclusions per little loaf um, and start there. And like I said, as you're adding it, like for the raisins, I had 75 grams of raisins. That's perfectly within reason, but it was just too many ra raisins. Um, I could just tell as I was adding them. So I ended up with this many left over, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that could actually overload um, the loaf itself and just you know, affect the folding, affect the shaping, um, and affect the oven spring. So you don't want to go too heavy, but the only way to know is to kind of get your hands in, right? So I say just kind of go for it. Um, and that's my advice on how much inclusions to do. So 20% of your total flour weight um, is a great starting point for adding inclusions. And to keep notes, you might go up to 25, you might go up to 30. Um, if you notice for the bacon cheddar jalapeno let me think 45 plus 25 is 70 plus 30 is 100 so for that loaf there's actually 100 grams of inclusions in that little loaf and there's only supposed to be supposed to be um 65 to 75 grams in that loaf so but it works and i just know it works because i've done it before the first time i did it my husband said no more jalapeno you got to increase that so i'm pushing the max with that one but just want to let you guys know that that you can you can just play with it and just become comfortable with it and learn from your bread as you go. Um, and if anything, you'll have some really yummy mistakes and you guys can eat it and enjoy it and then just try again, try again, try again, try again. Um, so preparing inclusions, there are some things you're going to need to do to prepare your inclusions. So the first thing that I recommend is soaking um, anything dried. 
Okay, so like I soaked my raisins before I put them in uh, my dough. I soaked them in hot water for, I think I had them soaking for two hours. Um, ideally a little longer, but you could also go shorter if you're crunched for time. Um, just don't put them in dry. And here's why. They are um, dehydrated and they're gonna soak up the water from your dough and they're gonna uh, rob it of its hydration and then it's not gonna behave as it should, um, or as you know it to behave. So it's not gonna feel the same, it's not gonna bake the same, it's not gonna proof the same. So that's why you soak things first. So you're gonna soak things like um, raisins, cranberries, dried cherries, um, dried apples, and things like that. It's like, I know I can hear you already saying, why wouldn't you just use fresh apples? Um, soaking dried fruit is still not going to be as much moisture as uh, using the fresh fruit. So that's kind of the reason. But that said, you can absolutely use fresh fruit. And we'll get to that in a second. When you're soaking your inclusions, use water from the recipe. So when I soaked my raisins, I soaked them in, I think, 40... I can't remember this time. It was 40 or 50 grams. But I removed that amount um, from the uh sorry from the mixture <laughs> i have baby brain um and sentences are hard so that's when i do that's that's what i was trying to think of that's when i do um the cinnamon raisin for all three loaves this time because i was doing a mix of three different flavors i actually didn't change the hydration at all um i didn't soak the raisins in any removed water. I just made my regular simple sourdough and then I soaked some raisins in some separate water just because I was making three different kinds. And I've done that before and it actually works out okay, but just for a more, I guess when you're first starting out with inclusions, I would soak it in the water from your recipe just to be on the safe side. Um, I, so, and as an aside, the last two nights I've actually gotten okay sleep, but the three months leading up to those two nights, I've been seriously sleep deprived. So if I um, ever don't make sense, please say, Heather, that made absolutely no sense. Can you clarify that? And I will. Uh, my baby is five months old and um, yeah, we're dealing with some sleep, sleep things. I'm sure any parents can relate. So let's talk about cooking. Um, you're gonna cook some ingredients that you're gonna add as well. You're gonna cook your rolled oats, you're gonna cook your sweet potatoes, you're gonna cook bacon, like I talked about, I cooked my bacon ahead of time. You're gonna cook uh, quinoa, anything like that that um, requires cooking needs to cool before you add it. So make sure you cook it and allow it time to cool because um, you're not gonna wanna put any hot ingredients into your dough, it's gonna become an awful mess. It's gonna start to cook the flour and cook the dough and you don't want that. So make sure it's cool. Toasting, um, certain notes and seeds, uh, no, certain nuts and seeds like uh, pecans, almonds, sunflower seeds, um, sesame seeds can be toasted and they add a lot of flavor. And so you can use um, your skillet or toast them in the oven, whatever you prefer, just Google it, um, you know, how to toast pecans and then you can find out what the best way is or what's gonna work best for you. Uh, and that'll add new flavor. You don't have to do that, um, but it just adds a deeper, more complex flavor profile to your bread. So that's an option. Also, if you're using anything like garlic, you're gonna wanna roast that first. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how you prepare your inclusions. Um, I'm gonna look over some questions here to see. Um, by the way, if I miss your question, I will um, answer it after the fact. Um, I'll come back and go through the chat and I'll answer it in the comments so you can check back. Um, let's see. So I'm interested with olive bread and also lemon rosemary olive oil. Can you explain how you would include those options. Yes, um, I don't think I talked about my wet ingredients yet or liquid ingredients. No, I didn't. So, um, but I'll, I'll touch on it. I'll answer your question. Um, so the olive bread, what you're gonna do, your olives will be wet. Okay, they'll be considered a wet ingredient. Um, squeeze the water out as much as you can with a paper towel uh, without completely squishing the olives. Um, just be really gentle, but try to get as much water out as you can. And then just use them um, as a regular kind of dry ingredient. Um, and you could do, that would be fine. And then for the lemon rosemary olive oil, um, lemon, I'm assuming lemon zest, um, you can just mix in just like a dry ingredient, same with rosemary. Olive oil is gonna be considered um, a liquid, so it depends how much you wanna add in. You're gonna replace that much of your water 
with the oil. Um, so you'll have to kind of, again, play with that, replace that water, because otherwise it's going to affect your hydration. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes. Um, I have that in my bullet points here. Great question. Um, let's see, Lisa, can you talk about using cooked versus dry inclusions like oatmeal or sweet potatoes and if you have to adjust your hydration? I may have already covered that just then. Um, and if I haven't, then I'm going to because I'm going to talk about adjusting hydration for wet uh, inclusions. Um, so hang tight and Lisa, let me know if your question doesn't get answered, uh, but I think it might. Um, let's see. I heard that apple makes the dough very wet. Yeah, fresh apples can absolutely make the dough really wet. Um, like I said, with the olives, what you can do is kind of chop it into the tiniest little pieces and squeeze out as much as you can. But again, I would say to use that dried apple and just soak it, um, introduce a little bit more hydration that way. Uh, but I have cooked with, with um, fresh apples before. I made a cinnamon, I'm trying to remember, a cinnamon raisin apple, I think. It was really, really good. Um, the dough around, like on the inside, I'll pull this slice for you to show you. Um, the dough around, like pretend the this block of cheese is an apple. The dough around there was was a little bit um, damp. It wasn't like wet or undercooked. It just absorbed some of the moisture, and so um, it was still really delicious. But I, so I do encourage you if you're curious about what fresh apples would do, just experiment with it and cook with them and just see what happens. Um, all right, so let's talk right now about um, adjusting your hydration for inclusions. So when you're soaking um, your ingredients, like I talked about, uh, raisins, cranberries, um, dried cherries, dried apples, stuff like that, you're going to want to use some of the water from the recipe, like how you reserve 50 grams of the water from your recipe when you're adding the salt. Um, same idea, you're going to reserve 50 more and soak your ingredients in that. Um, and make sure that that's all absorbed. Um, and again, you might need to play with it. Um, you might end up straining out some of the water and losing a little bit of that hydration, but it's okay, it's like negligible. Um, so I would first weigh out your water and see, you know, you can visualize them, like weigh out your water and see how much, um, let me grab a bowl, and see how full your bowl is with water um, at that point. And then you'll be able to say like, well, I have this many inclusions to soak, like that's way too much water or that's not enough water. So you'll you'll kind of be able to visualize it. And if you get it wrong by 10 or 20 grams, don't stress about it, it's gonna be fine. Um, you know, sourdough is a science, but it's also a, an art. Um, so we need to use our intuition a little bit and also just kind of trust the dough and the dough won't let you down. So hydration, um, after you soak your ingredients, your hydration does not need to be adjusted at all. But when you're using wet ingredients, like we just talked about, like fresh apples, um, if you're using uh, onions, uh, fresh onions, I think um, cooked caramelized, those would be considered um, kind of dried and you'd use those as a dry ingredient. Um, or things like cooked sweet potatoes, like that's really moist. Um, that's a lot of liquid in there. You're gonna use those, as, that's gonna be considered a wet ingredient. And you're gonna adjust your hydration by two to 5%. Um, you can use your judgment. Uh, you could start with 2% and then um, if, you know, bake it and see what happens. And if it's a little too wet, then reduce it to 5% by 5%. Uh, and see what happens there. And even, you know, that's just a guideline. If you still feel like your dough could do a, with a little more dryness, then, you know, decrease the hydration by seven, eight, nine percent and just play with it. Again, I hope, I'm going to keep repeating myself, but I hope that you guys understand that you can make these changes by yourself. You can make these adjustments by yourself, um, right? That's the whole message of Leavenly. That's the Leavenly moments is working with your kitchen, your ingredients in your life. So you are going to be the judge. You're going to take that control and make those changes. Um, and remember, it's just bread. So don't be afraid of it. It's just bread. It's just flour and water. Um, so here's an example um, for the, like a math example. I printed it out because my brain's a little slow. So if you're making a 75% hydration loaf, um, like my simple sourdough, and you're using 750 grams of water per 1,000 grams of flour, um, but you're also including 200 grams of diced apples, then you'll want to reduce your hydration to 70 to 73%. So again, if you're making my simple sourdough, hydrate, uh, simple sourdough recipe, but you're adding 200 grams of fresh diced apples, you're going to want to reduce the hydration of the dough 
by to about 70 to 73%. Um, then that's about 700 to 730 grams of water. So it's just, it's very simple math. And sometimes math really freaks people out um, when they're trying to do, when they're trying to bake and try to do math at the same time. So any questions about that, feel free to send them over, email me, ask them in the Facebook group, the Sourdough Mamas group. Um, we are all here to answer those questions. So, um, and again, you know, even if you have it like roughly right, it's going to turn out great. So I say just, again, go for it. You guys are going to be like, yeah, and we know how to go for it. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, any questions? If using dried herbs, would you soak these or add more water to the dough? I would just um, sprinkle them in, just like cinnamon. Um, if you're using a ton, ton, ton of herbs for some reason, I might consider soaking them or maybe after you sprinkle them on, like give your dough a spritz or two of water, if that makes sense. Um, I would just do it though, sprinkle them in. Um, no big deal. And even you could do that in the beginning um, during after your auto lease or after you add the salt during one of the folds, you could add them at that stage so that they're really well incorporated. You wouldn't need to wait to the pre-shape. And so let's talk about that. Why do we add certain ingredients to, during the third fold? And why do we add certain ingredients during the pre-shape? Um, it's again, completely up to you. I'm gonna sound like a broken record. Here's why I do it during pre-shape. Um, I know that raisins, if they're on the surface, I'm gonna show you with my, Grab the other half. When raisins are on the surface of the dough um, and they bake at 450 degrees, they're going to char, they're going to burn. Um, so these are burned and it doesn't mean that they're disgusting and horrible. If you got that piece, you know, you might eat it, you might just pick it off, no big deal. But those are, look, like those are like crispy, crispy, burnt <laughs> raisins. And I know that I know that about raisins. So that's why I add them during the pre-shape because you can control a lot better how few come out to the surface. Whereas if I added them during one of the folds and you're folding and mixing them in and incorporating them well, they're gonna be in the dough and they're gonna be on the outside of the dough and there's kind of nothing you can do about it. But that said, if that doesn't bother you, then go for it, do it that way. Um, you know, the downside of adding the ingredients during the pre-shape is that they're not always perfectly dispersed. Like, I don't know if you noticed when I showed you my cinnamon raisin uh, loaf, but that's not perfectly dispersed. It's like, I that's not an Instagram bread, but it's amazing, it's delicious. My family loves it. Um, and that's just the way that I do it. So again, that's the, that's the method that I choose to do. You guys can choose a totally different method. Um, the power, again, again, is in your hands. <laughs> So, but here's my recommendation, okay? Cheese and raisins, um, you don't want to expose to too much direct heat. So I do recommend, um, unless you're okay with them being burned, like I said, um, to do them during the pre-shape because cheese will, scorch cheese obviously will melt. Um, cheese will melt onto your your um, cooking vessel, like the bottom of my Dutch oven, my um, Challenger bread pan has kind of grease stains from doing a bake with cheese in it, um, that one, uh, yesterday. So you don't want really to expose too much cheese to that direct heat and same with the raisins. Um, but I meant, again, that said, if you want to go for it, just try it, just go for it and try it. Um, so that's why I did mine during the pre-shape. Um, third fold is generally recommended, I think because so that your dough can uh, develop enough strength in and of itself without other things kind of getting in the way and hindering it um, and weighing it down. So it's gonna be able to ferment, it's gonna be able to rise and be really lofty and fluffy. And then at the third fold, you can introduce them when your dough is nice and strong. But um, again, that said, you could try with the second fold, you can even try with the first fold. I think dried herbs though is safe to add during that uh, first fold period. Um, let's see, I wanted to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much third fold versus pre-shape um, additions. I tend to, again, do pre-shape because then it's at the very end of my process and I divide mine up and I do three different loaves of bread. But if you're doing one giant um, or three different, three of the same loaves, sorry, with the same inclusions, 
then you could do it during the third shaping. I just don't, personally, I don't really want to dirty three different bowls. <laughs> I'm a lazy baker. I'm a busy mom. My kitchen already is a, kind of a disaster behind the scenes, if you could see that. Uh, there's dishes in the sink. Like, I don't want to make more work for myself. So that's why that's another good reason to do it during the pre-shape phase. All right, let's check out some questions. Before we do, let me know, guys, real quick, if you're finding this helpful, um, send me a thumbs up, send me a yes, this has been fantastic, let me know, and also um, subscribe to my channel, because we do do this every two weeks, so um, we'll be talking about a whole lot more stuff uh, in, the, in the coming weeks, so let's see, I don't understand why everything these days is judged against Instagram, said Stephanie. Um, this is bread, not cosmetic surgery. Does it taste good? Mission accomplished. Yeah, you couldn't have said it better, uh, Stephanie. That's fantastic. It's, uh, it really is. I, I mean, some of my loaves come out so amazing looking that I'm like, wow, I need to share that. And then I bake some other ones like um, this guy I was telling you earlier with like the really wonky score. It's a little bit overcooked on the top. It's, and then you think, oh, I don't want to share that. And it's like, please. We should be sharing everything. We should be sharing even our failures. That's not a failure, by the way. This is amazing, amazing bread. Um, but we should just be sharing it without fear of judgment. Um, but I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, let's see. Tom said, my cheese often floats to the top and creates a lively crust, but nothing in the dough. Any thoughts? Yeah, so um, what you could maybe try doing, Tom, then, is if you're doing it during the pre-shape, maybe try doing it at the fourth fold, um, just to let that cheese get more incorporated, but not like so much so that it's coming out um, of the surface of the dough like we talked about. So that's what I would try with that and see if you can get it a little bit more incorporated. Um, also, if you're doing it during the pre-shape, it's important to make sure that your dough is stretched as thin as you can without degassing it. It's like this kind of delicate balance. Um, but if you do that and you cover it evenly with cheese, then you should have a decent um, um, uh, dispersion of your cheese through the dough. So I hope that was helpful. Um, excellent. All right, so let's talk real quick about liquid ingredients. So sometimes you're gonna wanna add things like yogurt or beer or purees or honey. Um, I actually just saw that Jim Challenger, um, I follow him on Instagram. He's fantastic. He's a wonderful person, great company. And, uh, he made a loaf with, um, some Guinness beer in it. And he was, um, a little disappointed that he couldn't taste it more once it was baked. Uh, I think it was a Guinness and cheddar or something like that. So he actually used Guinness and that kind of was top of mind right now. So yogurt, beer, um, any purees, um, of any kind of vegetables or fruits, um, honey is it is considered a liquid inclusion. So again, you can replace up to 20% of the water in your recipe with the liquid inclusion. So again, I'll say that one more time. You can replace up to 20% of the liquid in your recipe with your liquid inclusion. So you're not going to just want to do your basic 75% hydration and then also add in 200 grams of honey because it's gonna, the hydration's gonna be out of control, or beer, you know, it's all this extra liquid, so you need to adjust for that. Um, so I hope that part makes sense. My final uh, bullet point, and I can't believe we're at the end already, um, send me some more questions if you have them, because we're, we're getting there. Different shapes, okay? So there are different shapes for um, sourdough. You can do sandwich loaf, you can do ghouls, you can do batards. Ultimately, it's up to you. But the, I recommend the sandwich roll um, if you want to do some kind of swirl, like the cinnamon raisin works really well in that because you're going to roll it up like a jelly roll. Um, I didn't do a demo of that type, um, but I probably should have, and maybe in the future I will. Um, but basically you do the exact same thing. You're going to actually pre-shape your dough like normal. And then when you go to shape your dough, that's when you put your inclusions in and you're just going to roll, 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 roll as tight as you can. And that's it. So that's your, that's your swirl loaf for your uh, your pan bread. Um, a boule of retired, you just kind of want to think about how it's going to appear and what kind of appearance you want to make. Or conversely, just what you're comfortable with. Like if you only have bannetons that are round, then obviously you're going to make boules, and that's totally fine. Um, for this, I'm going to do uh, one boule and two batards for the final shaping in just a few minutes. And um, just to show you guys kind of the difference there. 
Um, so just, just think about what the slices will look like. Think about if you're trying to impress anyone or if you're just feeding your family, you know, just all those good considerations. So that's my final thought. Um, I'm just going to get rid of my agenda and then we're going to, I'm going to show you what the final shaping looks like for these doughs. So let me tilt you down again. We're going to pull off our cover. And again, that's just to prevent a skin from forming. Um, then I kind of gently rub the, the flour on the top kind of into the bread so there's not a ton. Oh yeah, this guy's really loaded. This is my cheddar bacon jalapeno and I can just feel. <laughs> I'll have to be really gentle with him. So he is gonna be my bool because I can be the most gentle with shaping um, with my bools. So I'm going to grab my round banneton. First I'll move. Where did my bench knife go? First I'll move this dough with strawberry all over it. I forgot that I was going to be using it again. I'll move him down here. And see, I got a little bit stuck there. That's a word to the wise. I should have sprayed that with some water first. So I will do that. This is the banneton I'm going to use. This is one that I use all the time. So I'm not even going to season it with rice flour because it's already really well seasoned. I don't know if you can see that, but it is covered with rice flour from many, 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 many bakes. So I don't even need to put rice flour in there. But if yours is not the same way, um, then definitely coat your banneton with rice flour, please, to avoid that sticking. So there's a jalapeno coming out. I'm going to pinch him in. And then just kind of lift it up and get um, presented how I like it. I kind of like it this way. You're not going to want a ton of water under this because you're going to want it to grip the surface of your countertop. Um, but not so much that it starts to tear. It's kind of like a fine balance. So once I start to shape this, I'll be able to tell. So I'm going to spritz my hands again so we don't stick. And this is how I shape. So very, very gently, I kind of push in with my right pinky first. I almost do this. And you'll see, I make this motion. And as I'm doing that, I'm tucking the dough in underneath. I'll try to go slow for you so you can see. So with this hand, I'm just rotating the dough like this. So it's pulling against the countertop underneath twisting itself. Oh, those inclusions are already pushing toward the surface. I can feel it. So we're going to just do a little. Yeah, I can't do any more because those are going to burst right through. So that's as much as we can do. And I have a little bit more um, play over here. I can tell this area is very, very full, but I can play a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is kind of just tuck the dough underneath, try to create a little bit more surface tension over here on this side like that. And then again, I can kind of feel those inclusions kind of trying to burst through over here now. So that's about as much as I'm going to want to push this. This piece of cheese is starting to come out. So I'm at my limit. So now I'm going to just spritz this and then he's going to go into the banneton ready for overnight proofing, like proof in the fridge. Um, this is okay if they open up at the bottom but I'm a little bit OCD and I like to kind of pinch them off because I have this fear that they're going to sit against the um, my, my bread pan and just burn, but it's never happened yet, but that's just my own thing. So there's my nice bread. I'm going to grab right, right over here my handy dandy Challenger breadware dough covers. And these things are super cool. They're biodegradable. I'll put a link to those in the description below too. But they're just like a big shower cap and they're biodegradable. So I do you reuse them a few times. And then once they get unreusable, you can toss them and, you know, kind of feel good about it. At least it's not as bad as using plastic. And it really does work really well. So there's that one. Next, we're going to do our strawberry one. And he's going to go into a um, oval Banneton. Again, really well seasoned already, so I'm not even going to flour that. I don't need to. Bring him down here. And then for the shaping for this guy, because it's a powder, we can actually be a little more rough um, than normal. So I'll show you how to be gentle with this one and how you can be a little bit more rough. So this, you're going to do just a regular um, shape. So we're going to pull and fold over. 
trying to make it stick, but there is flour on top now. So it won't work as well. Pull from the bottom and over. And then kind of put it on its seam. Then I'm going to use my hands and kind of tuck in and under. Now I have to use this bench knife. So I tuck in and kind of pull out and get some water in my hands. So tuck in and pull down, tuck in and pull down, tuck in and pull down. And again, you're making surface tension. And you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing over on this side. Spray this hand too. Tuck in, you're, you're basically pushing the dough into the center of itself. And then when you pull it down, it's creating that surface tension that you want for that, for that um, batard. And then I use my hands for that final shape, tuck the ends in a little bit. Just like that, I'm gonna let it kind of rest for a second and see it's kind of like more of an oval shape than a circle. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna scoop from the bottom, flip over and place in here. Just like that, you can see some strawberry popping out. Got a cover on him. And then I typically cold proof about 18 hours. So I'll probably bake these, well, I do uh, 20, I don't know. Yeah, 18 to 24 hours is kind of about my limit. Um, so I'll bake these tomorrow early afternoon. Then our final guy with the raisins inside will be very gentle with him. So we're not gonna be um, pulling and folding or anything. We're kind of gonna do the same thing that we did with the boule, just really, really gently. So I'm gonna first tuck this in under as much as I can, rolling and tucking. And scoop, flip, and roll and tuck, making that surface tension really gently and being mindful of how close those inclusions are to breaking through. And you'll feel it. You don't really have to pay much attention because you'll feel it. So again, tucking that under. And this might need a couple go arounds to get that tension that we want. Okay, I can kind of feel that those are gonna burst through any minute. So I'm about happy with that. You can kind of see that they're getting a little close. So again, like I said twice before, this I'm not gonna put flour in this, but you should if you've never used your bandpan before, or if it's new, or if you're not using a liner. Um, but I just don't need to anymore. It's been so many bakes now. There, and you just lay them in like a little baby and put a cover on him, and then he's gonna go night-night in the fridge. You tell I have kids. <laughs> there we go. All right, so that is your basic Sourdough Inclusions 101 crash course. Um, I'm gonna look and answer a couple quick questions, but we are running just about to an hour, so I'm gonna just look real quick. Um, let me see. Oh, Tom said I did 100% Guinness beer and it still wasn't very Guinnessy. That's interesting, you did 100%. Um, let's see. Um, Will you have a cheat sheet on how to adjust water when fresh fruits are added? I still don't quite understand the calculations. Yeah, okay, that's that's a good idea. Um, I will draft something up and I will link to that in the description below because I think that would be really helpful. But in the meantime, head over to levenly.com and up in the search bar, search for inclusions. Although you should probably just see it. Um, it's, my, it's my most recent blog post. So over on lovingly.com, it's um, all about inclusions. It just walks you through everything that I just walked you through. It includes all the math formulas. It includes all the percentages. So definitely go check that out. And guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, I can't believe we talked for a whole hour about inclusions and still didn't get all the questions answered. I apologize. Um, I hope the demo was helpful. I hope the question and answer period was helpful. And again, I hope, like I said, if you come away from this video just knowing like, I can add inclusions without using a recipe. I just need to follow these guidelines and I can do it. I can make the adjustments myself. I, I would love that and I will sleep better knowing that. So um, please go and try it. If you do, we're actually in this, um, the month of March, we're doing a Levenly Inclusion Challenge. And basically all that is, is you try uh, an inclusion 
Over on that blog post I talked about, there are over 40 uh, ingredient ideas that you can add to your sourdough. So go check that out. Pick one out that you want to try and just try it. And then post some pictures on social media, tag, um, hashtag Levenly Inclusion Challenge. And I will see that. I will share your posts with the community. Um, and we can kind of know that we're all in this together. So again, guys, thank you so, so much. If you like this, please subscribe um, and like the video. And uh, yes, I will see you guys here for the Sourdough Mamas Live number seven in two weeks time. Hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful night.